Sri Pandeji, Sri Manish, Kalvarma, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. For me, it's a great privilege and a little out of uh, mainstream, uh, wherein I have to share my thoughts with the uh, user of technology and, and uh, primarily with uh, the group who are in the area of technology development and services. So it's a great privilege and I must really thank uh, uh, Manish and Kal Verma to giving me this opportunity. Meteorological science per se and weather forecasting services are very prime user of technology in the sense that uh, we have been prime user in observing uh, technology, communication technology, information dissemination technology, and since we are to uh, deal with a very large number of uh, data, it's okay. Uh, we also uh, use Weather forecasting um, basically is an initial value problem. And when I say initial value problem, that means you need to define the state of atmosphere at the given time when you embark upon preparing the forecast. And this defining the initial value is done through observations. And therefore, you need to have observing platforms across the earth surface, including land, ocean, uh, mountains, and so on and so forth, which is very complex. Forget about forecast. Often we talk about accuracy in weather forecast, and people say that they demand rather that we should be 100% accurate in giving the forecast. Leave aside the forecast, I must confess that we cannot be able, we are not able to define. 100% accurately the initial state of atmosphere for paucity of observing systems, observing or paucity of data. As you know that we are two-third oceans, there are no observing systems, mountains, no observing systems, desert, no observing systems. Poor countries who are not able to maintain and sustain uh, observing platforms, which are, they are very expensive. So we are getting observations from limited parts of Earth and that too in a very discreet manner and uh, therefore how to, how to really address the problem. And, and under these situations really we make use of remotely sensed estimates which are done through satellites. These are not observations per se. Satellites do not observe temperature, pressure, humidity. Satellite, what it does, it, it estimates the spectral signature which is characterized by the emissivity, emissivity of the radiating body and translate this information into various meteorological parameters. So some amount of error creeps in there. So despite of the fact that we end of the day generate temperature, humidity, wind and uh, other uh, profiles of different parameters, but there is huge amount of error and which this error is minimized through ground truthing, the surface observations and the upper air observations which we record at synoptic hours. Under the charter of uh, World Meteorological Organization, which is a specialized agency of United Nations, there is a protocol of observing system and it is mandatory for all the member countries to exchange this meteorological information seamlessly because weather and climate, as you know, have no boundaries. And in this process, therefore, the second step is how to exchange the information in real time because if you lose time, in, uh, there is a time gap between observation and the, the, the time when you run the model, uh, this time has to be minimized. 
Normally, we run model twice a day, 0 and 12 UTC. And therefore, within three hours of observations, we must have all the observations of entire globe at my desk. This is a stupendous task. And the volume of data which we are handling, each time step is in gigabytes. And also imagine that if you are having such a voluminous data from different platforms, satellite, radar, surface observations, automatic weather stations, and so on and so forth, you have to code it, transmit it, decode it. So therefore, first job is to collect the data, and second is to clean the data. And therefore, you need to have very high-speed computing systems to handle such voluminous data systems. And thereafter, you embark upon running the models to generate the forecast. And, and that would mean that you extrapolate the given uh, state of atmosphere, say, at time t0. Every 15 minutes, you run the model and prepare the forecast for t0, t2, t3, t4, and so on and so forth. And that's what we do for extrapolation for next 10 days using the medium range weather forecasting systems. And in the process, there is some amount of error, say x if uh, available at t0. And when you extrapolate both in time and space, this error propagates. And it becomes, at given point of time, so large that beyond that point, the forecast has no theoretical value. And therefore, you really try to minimize this error in defining the initial state, and while extrapolating, you try to type the errors in a form that it do not grow very fast. I won't go into the detail of weather forecasting, but from the user point of view, or from technology or technological point of view, the issues which are now confronting us, starting from observing systems, and industry should take note of the fact that the meteorological observing requirements across the globe is growing very fast. Today, we have large number of applications uh, which is directly linked to the increased accuracy of weather forecast. And more and more sectors are using, and one of the sectors which is the prime user emerged, new, new, new area is insurance. Agriculture insurance. There are Agriculture Insurance Corporation, IFCO Tokyo, ICI, Lombard, Kotak Mahindra. There are four companies which are now uh, giving crop insurance. And this is weather insurance, weather indices based agriculture insurance. And therefore, for each farm, you have to have a reference observatory against which the meteorological parameters can be referred to. Now, therefore, ideally, ideally, you would require meteorological observations at each farm level, which is not possible. But there is a consensus which has emerged that as on date, for the given level of uh, insurance uh, design, you at least need 1,30,000 observatories in the country, as against existing about 6,000. So there is a huge gap between available network and potential requirement. As a matter of fact, there are large number of other applications, which is uh, be it tourism, be it urban. Urban uh, flood forecasting is uh, catching up, and there is a uh, significant uh, growth in the requirement of meteorological observations in mega cities, and uh, of course, uh, there is a network design which calls for requirement of uh, every one kilometer mesh grid point where meteorological observations are required to translate rainfall into runoff and characterize that into how the stream flow would take place, and depending upon the, the city's topography and physiographic features, how the water will uh, flow into the 
uh, into uh, from the city uh, towards its uh, natural streams. So the point I want to say is that the most uh, growing requirement is meteorological observing requirement, and the second is data communication. Now, how to communicate this kind of information to various users and stakeholders? It could be National Meteorological Service who really make use of this kind of information into their models, and also for number of applications which are flowing out of uh, the ancillary disciplines. The equally important information dissemination. We have a system uh, which is uh, primarily catering to the farmers of the country and we are generating uh, as on date district level weather forecast and communicating to the farmers uh, in a form of advisories uh, in association with the state agricultural universities and institutes of Indian Council of Agricultural Research who translate weather forecast into actionable agri-management practices. The, the challenge before us is how to reach to the farmer, uh, how to inform him as to, in the given weather situation, what management action he is uh, required to do. And uh, primarily, there is also a, a very strong linkages uh, for input management, say irrigation, because irrigation, when to irrigate and how much to irrigate is highly weather sensitive. So also fertilizer application and pesticide application. All input management is being highly weather sensitive, uh, is uh, required to be dealt in a form wherein the weather information goes into the decision making both at farmers level as well as those who are dealing with supply of these farm inputs. So, the challenge is really how to penetrate, how to reach. Uh, recently, a survey was done by National Council for Applied Economic Research that this information is reaching nearly 22% of the user group despite of very targeted effort. Uh, we have Kisan call centers, we have uh, mobile applications, we have IT dissemination mechanisms. Notwithstanding all these uh, information dissemination systems, our outreach is very poor. And here is the role for intermediaries and industry to really take on this information to the user to enhance the economic growth of the sectors. I was uh, told by Manish that um, if I can really throw some light on our wishful thinking about scenarios for um, where the, the meteorological or environmental sensors can be developed and deployed. I was just discussing with uh, uh, Pandeji that uh, we have started uh, in a pilot mode uh, weather forecast for surface transport. We have a service for aviation, which is very structured and very old service. But for surface transport, service is rather poor. And now we are embarking to prepare uh, a forecast for different highways. And uh, there is a huge scope for deploying meteorological sensors which are uh, able to sense the road conditions and conditions of the lower boundary layer and couple it with the forecast for the uh, or now cast for next three hours so if a driver who is going on driving on a road is better aware of the meteorological conditions to take his decisions. It uh, minimizes the accidents, enhances the road safety, and also the fuel efficiency, which we have somehow significantly neglecting because it is the wind speed and wind direction which add uh, additional load on the particularly uh, the larger trucks where uh, the resistance and drag is higher. And, uh, uh, 
selected driving period can help to minimize the, the fuel losses. So there are large number of applications which are growing. In health sector, uh, there is a, uh, a strong connect between diseases and uh, air quality, diseases and water quality, and both are linked to the meteorological conditions. And we need to really develop a connect between our monitoring mechanism, forecast mechanism, and information dissemination mechanism. So also the disaster risk reduction. Most of the natural disasters are triggering because of either heavy rainfall or extreme weather conditions, including extreme temperature, extreme wind, including cyclone. And right mechanism, if deployed for information dissemination, can really help user to minimize the losses. The, uh, the recent uh, example of Pailin, which happened uh, in October last year, is a glaring example of that. And particularly last year, we had uh, five cyclones. And there was hardly any casualty in all the cyclones, mainly because of accurate weather forecast and timely dissemination of information. So the information dissemination is equally important in order to uh, build a very strong decision making uh, and support system at the ground level. I think I will stop at this stage and will be happy to interact subsequently. Thank you very much.